Are you all ready to learn the essentials of building community? Celestial is an exclusive, all-inclusive live work and play experience centered and balanced on mind, body, and spirit. Celestial is cultured, collective, not contained by geography, focused on substantiability, science, spirituality, technology, engineering, ecology, the arts, and philosophy. Celestial is maintained and operated by economic and ecological partnerships, by purposeful connecting local economics and ecology. Structured environments of holistic human advancements are made possible. You guys welcome to the stage Shun Williams. <laughs> Quite the warm welcome. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, before we jump in, I just wanted to center it out. Please get comfortable. Um, personally, I don't like these things. If you don't like them either, take them off. Second, I invite you to find a comfortable position, whether that's lotus pose, crisscross applesauce, sitting on your legs, whatever it may be. We're gonna drop in together. So after you remove your feet muzzles and get into a meditative space, I invite you to close your eyes and then we're gonna drop in together. Go ahead and take full awareness of the body, feeling your toes, your feet, your ankles, the shins, the knees, the thighs, the pelvis, the base of your spine, up into the chest, your shoulders, your neck, your jaw and of course, your head. Go ahead and find a comfortable posture that's going to allow you to start connecting with the self. Focus on where the bottom of you meets the top of your seat. And I want you to take your focus to the bottom of your body, that place where you meet your seat, and imagine a red flame. As you breathe in, allow the flame to ignite. As you breathe out, go ahead and allow that flame to expand and grow. Now, moving up towards the belly button or navel area, continuing the breath, go ahead and imagine an orange flame. As you breathe in, Allow the flame to ignite. As you breathe out, allow the flame to grow. Moving from the navel to the diaphragm or the region directly under the rib cage. On your next in-breath, imagine a yellow flame. As you slowly exhale, allow that flame to combust and become brighter and brighter. Following the breath, on our next breath, we're gonna go to the direct center of the rib cage, the sternum, the place where all of our ribs interlock. Feel the stillness here. Feel into you. Feel into truth. On the inhale, allow a green flame to light. On the exhale, Allow that flame to engulf you, becoming bigger, brighter, warmer. Moving up to the throat, on your next in-breath, imagine a blue flame. Exhale slowly, allowing that flame to grow. Take another inhale here, exhale again, and allow that blue flame to become even brighter and brighter. Opening the throat, opening our ability to communicate, collaborate, and co-create. On the next breath, in, take your awareness 
to the brow, the area between your eyes, directly in the middle of your forehead. Imagine a purple flame there. On your next gradual out breath, allow that flame to open, almost like a torus for your head made of fire. Allow that purple flame to open and cleanse the mind, to center our thoughts, and to bring awareness back to our cognitive capacity. On your next in-breath, take the awareness to the crown of the head, just on the top, and take one long exhale, vocally verbalize, ah, let that breath out. On your next in-breath, imagine a lavender flame just above the crown, exhaling slowly, allow that flame to open. Taking the hands and connecting pinky to pinky, ring finger to ring finger, middle finger to middle, index to index, thumb to thumb. Bring your two thumbs to that same position on the brow in the middle of the forehead, taking an in-breath. And exhale. Feel your light, feel your power, feel your gift, feel your unique you-ness. On the next in-breath, I want you to connect to your higher power, Allah, Yahweh, Baba, Ganesha, Jehovah, whatever you call that higher power, perhaps Jesus or the Buddha. Allow a white cord from source to you to enter the body, propagating each of these flames, allowing them to co-mingle, to mix, to become one white, bright light. Allow this energy to move all the way through the body in reverse, entering the crown, down into the brow, lowering into the throat, irradiating and illuminating the heart space, down to the bottom of the ribs, to the navel, to the bottom of your seat. In this chromatic expression, you have power, a light, a gift, superpowers that only you have and will not be seen for another 25,000 years. Claim that power, wear it proudly. Returning the thumbs to the brow, Let us bring these flames that smolder back down to a candle size so that we may be nimble, we may shine, and we may dance together here in this space. Together here we enter a sacred space for ideas, for expression, for conversation and communication. We honor all viewpoints, we honor all shares, and we come together as one cohesive consciousness to advance. Returning the hands to the lap or a comfortable position, I invite you to bring your awareness back to the body, to cozy in, Allow that warmth to flow through you, and when you're ready, open your eyes. My name is Shun Williams. I am principal of a company called Celestial, and ecstatic to be able to share my gifts with all of you today, so thank you for having me.
I know you all got one of these guys, so go ahead and take it out. First and foremost, make sure it's on silent. Then load your camera. If you point your camera at the screen, it'll pop up a nice little link so that we can follow along together. So around 2015, Celestial started as an idea. I was actively going through my dark night of the soul and experiencing uh, Saturn's reminder to be disciplined in all that we do. And I thought to myself, as I'm breaking apart, evolving, shifting, changing, following that Platonian energy, what if there was a place where I could fully stand in polarity, my good, my bad, my ugly, work on myself while still making a living because, you know, I got to take care of this thing. It's weird, but I like it. And meet amazing other people that are on the same trajectory. And I couldn't find a place. It just, I looked and I looked and I looked and I looked and I looked. For three years of my life, I traveled the world looking for this place in different faces and places and spaces. Where are my people? And then I met this amazing human right here. And she told me, the space that you are looking for is inside of you. So first, you have to go here. And then you can pull it out. And then when you materialize this, you can invite others into it that are going to have similar ideologies. Because guess what? They're looking too. So we decided as a collective, as these people started to show up, and they still are, that we're going to create a live, work, play dynamic that focuses on mind, body, spirit, and gives us the ability to hone in, refine, and refresh all of these things. The way we live, the way we work, the way we play, the mind, this weird physical container thing, and the spirit because they're all one and the same. The mind is going to set the pace for the body, right? The spirit is going to inform the mind. So to the extent in which we have done self-discovery and dive deeply into the self, we find alignment with our spirit, our higher self, our highest calling, the highest good of all, not just, not just us. So when that crystallized, it took in the form of four elemental tracks, fire, earth, air, and water, six initiatives, mind, body, spirit, live, work, play, three states, Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado, and one borderless paradigm where mystics can be mystics, seekers can be seekers, magicians can be magicians, the broken can be broken and the healed can get their healing. Isn't that paradise? Isn't that a place where we can go without judgment? Isn't that a place where we can go with understanding? Isn't that a place where we can evolve without bias? So now, two years in, we signed our Mesa location 131 2020. Hey, look, an Aquarian in the age of Aquarius. Interesting how astrology works when you apply it. Um, and we decided that we wanted to marry allopathic and naturopathic together. If you're familiar with sacred geometry, this shape behind me is called the Vesica Pisces. And this is where zero point energy originates from. After we become conscious of the self, after we understand how we work, why we're here, and what to do with that energy, I think that's, I think that's called purpose. Um, you get to become acquainted with the God being. Hi, infinite potential. You're freaking sexy, right? And you just want to lay in the lap of that. And, and it sparks co-creation. It sparks something different. And, and not just in ourselves, in the entire world around us. 
right? Happy people attract happy people. Healed people attract healed people. Wealthy people attract wealthy people. So let's be wealthy in mind, body, and spirit, yeah? Let's be wealthy in the way that we live and abundantly eat from this planet, this beautiful garden that we came into, right? Let's be wealthy in the way that we work and not just help ourselves, let's help everyone. Look at all these people in here that wanna help you, look around. Th this is our essence, that is the commonality, the space between for everyone in this room. We like helping people, right? But who helps us? Who heals the healers? Who guards the guards? Who shepherds the shepherds? Well, now there's a place. And this place has standards, like community guidelines, like a commitment to unify, falling in love with the self, but not using a single one perspective to navigate our reality, leveraging all of the pieces that are here, I'm pretty sure some pretty amazing human beings got together. Josh, his aesthetic, his ingenuity. Hmm? You wanna come up here real quick? While she makes her way up, go ahead and take your phone out. Go ahead and scan that one. Can I have you stand right here? Is this okay? Thank you. And I'm going to have you all go to the celestial axioms. You can kind of browse as we read. I should introduce you to Cheryl or something else. OK. So Cheryl is a perfect example of something that I consider the homo luminous, something that comes after the homo sapien, right? Homo luminous. So after we go through dark times, Incidentally, we find the light within. And then we start to share that light, right? I found this, I feel this, right? What is it like living in your light? Living in my light? Yes. This that you've created, what is this like living in your light? Uh, well, I just saw it yesterday. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, it's, it's freeing, it's, it's joy and happiness and togetherness and comfort and peace and yeah expansion growth how many people here don't like those things i didn't think so can we give shale a round of applause Isn't it beautiful to be bright? So as you go through the celestial axioms, you'll notice that celestial axiom one is I am love. That can be tricky, especially when different people believe different things and have different views of love and what trauma bonding is and what lashing out is not. That gets tricky, right? So that takes us to axiom two. I believe what I believe. Because ultimately belief constructs reality, right? I believe I can fly. I believe I can soar. See me running through that open door. Spread my wings and fly away. I believe in each of you, right? So we use these axioms to create a platform of egalitarianism. Everyone comes in with the same understanding. Everyone comes in at the same commitment. Everyone comes in with equal ability to operate inside of the construct. So this is, this is the premise, the idea of what celestial is. So applying some of these same principalities, I want to talk to you a little bit today about what it is 
to build community. We've spoken a lot today about Greco-Roman mythology, about Olympus and heaven and the paradigm that is coming, this age of Aquarius, how we as cosmic beings move through an energetic reality, but ultimately we desire nothing more than togetherness, right? Inside and outside. We want to be fully together with who we are so when we show up, we can show up and give that light to everyone around us, right? So that takes me to this concept of ethos. Returning to our Greek counterparts, hey, thanks for the Da Vinci schools and stuff, guys. They're pretty cool. Um, it's a word that means character, but it is not a singular or separated variant of character. It's character for a group of people, a nation, an ideology, a way or a spirit. Hey, there's that word again, spirit, right? Right? Yeah? Okay, cool. But specifically ethos, it affects our emotions, our behaviors, and our morals. It's pretty powerful. That sounds a lot like mind, body, spirit. We all have different components, different capacity that creates an ethos. So like each of the small plants, the lights, the bowls, the trim, the shop, the boutique, they all own their, their own energy. But that energy, when assembled, creates a vibration, a vibratory state, a social unit, right? A group of people living in the same place, remember all those places I went to? Or having a particular characteristic in common, a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, or goals. So let's get super common. Why are you here? It is. She is here to find others to play with in heaven. Profound. Why are you here? She is here to feel alive and to feel awkward. Why are you here? He's here because of... Say that again, please. He's here because if it's a part of his path and for him to learn and grow. Why are you here? He is here for love and all of its experiences. Why are you here? my man. He is here to enjoy his human experience inside of all of us strange beings. Why are you here, King? He's here for connection and community. All right, beautiful blue, I'm longing for you. Why are you here? <laughs> she's here because she was invited I love it I love it so inside of each of those motivation centers we find the heart space right we all have different elements in community that provide different things from that heart space and I want to go over some of what those particular containers look like inside each and every single one of us because after we understand the self we have to learn how to play nice with others in heaven right so we have those that inspire initiate and participate right we have our go-getters the get out of my way or you might get hurt people right we have our initiates and participants right 
they may not always be there 100 percent of the time because that's not their place they start they move on they project vision right they show us how to move through things and once the lesson is learned they go on because inspiration is their primary function i'm here to inspire to move you forward right i am here to invest in you so that you can see your glow once you start my job's done. Bye. That's what I came to do. So I want you to take these beautiful things, put them over your heart space for me. Both hands over the heart. Please close your eyes. And I want you to remember, who is someone that inspired you to be where you are sitting? Who is someone that initiated you to help you on your path so that you can continue helping others on their path? And who are you currently participating with to keep that flame alive? Sit on that for a second and let that warm your heart. Really let that sink in and give thanks for those people the people that cared enough to push you to your next step. Maybe it was blissful. Maybe it was beautiful. Maybe it freaking sucked. But guess what? You're here in this seat doing what you're doing right now. So give thanks for that. After you give thanks for that, go ahead and return here to the space with us, please. So after our wonder fire elementals, we've got our more grounded people, the structural, the procedural, and the physical, right? The people that understand how things work and why they work the way that they do. The people that know how to maintain and push things forward, right? Now that we've been initiated, now that we're in the seat, what tools are we using or who are we relying upon for that ongoing, right? And our beautiful builders, the ones that give us you know, the physical world to exist in. We're gonna do that same exercise again. Please close your eyes, hands over the heart. And I want you to create with me for just one second. I want you to think about what kind of structure you can build in your life after this summit. What kind of heart motivated change can we make structurally, procedurally, physically after this summit? I want you to think about the people that you've met here in this building and on this experience that can help you do that. The saying goes, iron sharpens iron. So we need more earthen structure sometimes perhaps to help us stay accountable, perhaps to help us with our task management, or maybe give us a way that we can methodically do things to make continual progress. Now, after you think about who's gonna help you out after the summit, I invite all of you to come back here into this space again with all of us. So after those that inspire us, there's those that help us get our hands dirty, right? And after we start doing the work, we usually run into a new kind of person, more technical, ideological, or philosophical. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Do the work, my son. Do the work, my daughter. Do the work, God's self, right? Maintain that high vibratory state. See the teacher in each of your reflections, right? Go for the technical knowledge. Oh, I want to be a healer, but I don't know where to start. What modality should I check into first? Well, I want to build that platform and invite in more people like that. Who can I talk to about more information? Well, I've heard about this Ascension stuff and I like it, 
but where do I start learning? So I want you to imagine for a second. We're going to do this exercise one more time. I know, a little redundant. Hands over the heart space. And I want you to imagine what your life is going to be like after this summit, including these new technical elements. These technical elements on the energies of the cosmos and how those cosmos produced us as beings. And we come in perfectly imperfect. And then we learn to manage the energies that we come into this world with by identifying the archetypes within. And then we apply those to create something new. So imagine what that new life is going to look like. Is your body healthier? Are you making more money? Are you living off the land? Are you starting a community or your own business? What does that really look like? Feel that joy. Feel that contentment. See yourself accomplishing your heart's desire. When you're ready, please come back into the space here with me. So last but not least, we have our water elementals, the spiritual, the emotional, and the devotional. My man Claude and the wonderful Tia talked a lot about that scorpionic lux, that Scorpio energy, right? The devotional. There is no breaking that well. I am fixed on this feeling. It is my propellant. That can be good or bad. And the emotions that come up with that, right? Well, I feel this way because. Well, I'm motivated because. Well, I need to because, right? And then there are those that help us with that spiritual practice of tying that together so that we can do that in a healthy way. So that we don't hurt ourselves or those around us any of those reflections of ourself that come back along the way. A teacher is a teacher is a teacher, but we are not here to hurt. We're here to help, remember? So close your eyes one more time. Hands over the heart. Last time we're going to do this, I promise. And then I want you to remember the last time you felt real nurture. The last time someone embraced your spirituality. The last time someone showed you it's okay to be emotional. It's okay to have an outburst and find out what that means. I want you to feel what it felt like the last time you became a devotee. You applied yourself to something or someone applied themselves to you. You became devoted to a pursuit, infallible and unshakable, right? What does that love feel like? What does that nurture feel like? After that remembrance, please return to the space here with all of us. So these are elements of community. We call this the human experience. And for some strange reason, all of us human hybrid things in this room are having quite the similar experience. Kind of funny how that works, huh? So after we realize that we're really not that quite different, just like those seven to 10 layers of color, other people shine differently in different ways, we gotta figure out how to sustain that. Okay, I'm doing the work on myself. I'm doing the work on my health, my wealth, my business, my body. All right, how do I maintain these things, right? How do I get to a place where I go from the feeling, right, to the function, keeping it going? Well, we need counterparts for that. And that's where ethos, that's where community, that's where all these ideas come together. 
through support systems, right? Sometimes we have our fire support system, our earth support system, our air support system, our water support system. And we have to mind those things because they all function differently and things can get messy when people get together or they can be beautiful, right? So we go back to the baseline. So I want everyone to go back to those axioms real quick. Our baseline. So as we scroll down, I'm going to pull these up here so they're nice and big for everyone to see. Sign up for our newsletter, hint, hint, wink, wink. Sign up for our newsletter, hint, hint, wink, wink. I want to take a second to take focus on two axioms. One is axiom number four. I use only what is necessary. My cunning and discipline generate security for myself and other members of the living collective. I use obstacles as opportunities. The universe grants me opportunities to grow. And through my own growth, I enrich the living collective, right? Through my own growth, I enrich the living collective. Through my own growth, I enrich the living collective, okay. All right, and then we're going to go to axiom 12. I have all that I need. Because knowing is all that you need for anything, right? Knowing how to deal with something. Okay, cool. I have all that I need. I have what is necessary inside of me because I am all things. I am the fire. I am the earth. I am the air. I am the water for someone else and myself. I am all things already, right? I have no need for attachments or possessiveness, for there is abundance all around me. I use monetary systems as a tool for manifestation, not validation, right? We're following our heart's desires. We're not trying to impress anybody, because when you follow your heart's desires, you're going to impress plenty of people. Trust me. Like, damn, look at that. Look at that. Wow, look at that. That's amazing. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful look at it. Right? By manifesting good all around me, the universe reciprocates. I have given, or wait, what, what does that say? Oh, what I have given, I have gained to the nth degree. So if you don't give a crap, you ain't getting crap. Remember that egalitarian thing that we talked about where everybody is weak, equal? Not weak -wool. equal. We don't do weakness here. When someone falls, we pick them up. You remember that water? How does that make you feel? Right? When we see potential in someone, do you want this? Then we initiate, we inspire, we participate with growth, right? Because our weaknesses are someone else's strengths, and their strengths are our weaknesses, right? So again, it goes back to that journey of the self and how we're showing up. So how do you want to take care of you? Well, you were born with two feet and two hands, most likely, right, and a mouth and two ears, and all these things that make you autonomous. What's that word we like? Sovereignty. Say it with me. One, two, three. Sovereignty. Right? A decentralized autonomous organization is what you create when people expressing their gifts come together to support one another. Because the strengths and weaknesses, when they align, they create a perpetual battery. It just keeps going, right? 
those energy fields that Marcus talked about, the torus, the arc of life, the measurable BTUs emanated from the electromagnetic impulses of the heart, that's autonomy. That's sovereignty. You have everything you need. Just take care of it, right? You didn't come out the womb walking, right? But by being decentralized, by going and having your own experience, not being all in the mix of somebody else's story, you find your autonomy, right? So when we start to create a life inside of our autonomy, when we start to create a life inside of our gifts, empowered by our power, say that with me, empowered by our power, okay? Usually we see, okay, my strengths are over here, her strengths are over there, his strengths are over there. And we start building this almost DNA-like structure where we all go together. The same thing applies not just to the energetics of the body, the energetics of our emotional complex, or the energetics of connecting with, with spirit or source, but it connects to our wallet too, right? This production didn't happen with one person, one party, or one place you are here from all over the country. And you all invested in a dream that is going to power other people's dreams, right? The indigenous call this concept reciprocity, right? When I love the mother, she loves me and all of her gifts are free. She just wants my love, that's it. So you're telling me, Shun, that by operating in my power and by loving people, I'm going to make money? No. <laughs> no. That sounds crazy, bro. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yes. Because that group of people right there, if it's the right kind, they all want to see you win. And you want to see them win too. Right? Because the structure that they add to your life by being dependable is worth something. The feelings that you feel being in the presence of the right ones, it's worth something. Right? The things that we do together when we're alive in love, oh, it's worth something. And guess what? Other people feel that too. When you have one spark, it's there and then it's gone. You can cook on a bonfire, you can heal on a bonfire, right? Because all those sparks came together with a common goal. So ethos is equal to an econ economic model for participation. So that common characteristic, that commonality between all of you, that's an investment strategy. I'm going to get with other healers and we are going to heal the world. That sounds like a dream until you're sitting in a place like this, right? I had a horribly traumatic childhood. So I'm going to build a safer world for children. I had a really, really hard time in that 3D thing. So I'm going to create something where those rules don't apply. I like my rules better anyway. Right? So I'm going to find a set of rules in other people like my rules, and then I'm going to help them rule. So next we move on to specialization, right? Those doors, they have function, right? The lights, they're freaking beautiful, by the way. Great job, Cheryl. But they have function, right? They're not just there to be pretty. They make sure you don't F up your feet when you're going from place to place. They ensure a safe space. They set the ambiance or a vibe. They have a function. What is yours? So this one's rhetorical. Last time I was like, 
That's that Mars and Aries that I got. Why are you here? What are your intentions? What do you want? Right. Those specialists, they, they make everything worth it. The microphone, it's a specialist. The TVs, they're a specialist. The computer, it's a specialist. We're all specialists, right? So once we find our specialty, this typically translates to a position of power. Remember, powered by empowerment? Those weird little funny words that we, we sewed together a little bit ago? So in that structure that you're thinking about for yourself after this summit, I'm challenging you to think about where you can be of service to somewhere else where that's going to give them power and you power based off their specialization. Are they a door? Are they a banister? Are they a light? Are they a tree? Are they an owl? Do they belong in the cafe? Right? What is the specialty of the people around you? And what is the enrichment that they're adding? I have found that when you figure that out, something else happens. You know, hey, what was her name? Heidi, did I meet, was, was it Heidi, was that her name? The one that does massage stuff? I went to that thing and learned about the stuff and I told her about my back. I think that was her name. Do you remember what her name was? Oh yeah, that was Heidi, she's a sweetheart. Did you see her room? No, I didn't get to see her room, but we had a conversation. Well, you should go back and check out the room. Because the vibe in there was awesome. It's like a little mermaid land, right? Like Pisces heaven, just, right? But she also has a specialty, which, merits her position of power and is how you refer her, right? This isn't just my friend. She's going to improve your quality of life. She's going to take that back pain from you. She's going to help you with that old football injury. She's going to help you work on that knee that gives you stuff every now and then when the weather changes, right? So now her gift becomes an atomic bomb for brightness and you can have a shared customer experience, right? I'm gonna send this same customer to my boy Claude so you can show them who they really are, right? And then after Claude, I'm gonna pass that referral to Miss Tia so that she can show them a better way to live their life, right? Then after that, I'm gonna go over to Kayvon and say, hey, they now understand their essence Will you help them apply it, right? And now that they understand that they're here to make change because of their energetic disposition, let's get them three or four other heavy hitters, okay? The energy will come into them and then they can become a conduit for empowerment as well. And now we have an arc free flowing power i think we just solved the free energy problem guys what was that solidarity word that sovereignty word okay let's move forward shall we so this shared experience this shared customer that's where we're going as america goes through its pluto return as crypto is on the rise as the economic model shifts, breaks, shatters, and forms into something new, shared customers, shared experiences, shared empowerment, mutual evolution. Right, teacher? Right? Where does everyone benefit? And where does that benefit bring change? Remember how earlier I said it's okay to have an emotional breakdown? Sure, you can lose your shit and pop off. That's fine. Go ahead. But make sure it has function. What are you going to learn from it? How are you going to evolve afterwards? I freak out all the time. Right? But I've made the choice to typically have my freakouts around people that can help me with those freakouts. Right? 
And even if it's like the single lowest denominator of like, man, I don't ever want to come off like that. Even if it's that, they're gaining value from that experience, right? And I'm gaining value in understanding myself. Oh, well, I had this experience with this engagement and it brought up this in me. Oh, man, I thought I fixed that. Well, I guess not. Hey, you brought this up in me. Can we, can we continue this exchange so that I can look deeper into this, right? You're not gonna get hurt, I'm not gonna get hurt. It's just an awareness thing. I wanna evolve and you're helping me do that. Where are you gonna evolve? Where are you going to evolve, right? What's the orbit like? What's the transit and transition? What are the signatures of energy that we are bringing into ourself to be our self? You're all your God. Who here wants to be a God being? You already are, okay? You already are. So let's keep evolving because we learn these secrets. The environment of that evolution is extremely important, right? Because we do have trauma. We do have stories and perspective and previous experiences limited or extended right and sometimes things happen and we're like <laughs> right human experience big facts so we need to focus on this whole amygdala thing right the the that that red flame that orange flame you know that stuff when those fires are, are taken care of correctly those, those human needs for feeding, reproduction, you know, birth. It's kind of a big deal. Fight or flight, you know, those managers. <laughs> we we got to be mindful and present to the fact that, yes, every reflection is you, but in these exchanges, with you as you are adding stock to your human experience. Respect is currency. Compassion is currency. Tolerance is currency. Right? Seeking understanding. Please go back to your cell phones and go back to the axioms. I want to draw your awareness to axiom number eight. I analyze to empathize. We are not just ripping somebody a new one because we can. Go talk to them. Don't talk about them. Go talk to them. Okay? Analyze to empathize. I understand that my emotions help me to practically experience the living collective and its components, each and every single person, all of them. I understand that I use logic as a system or set of principles to help, to help me understand how to create peace within the living collective, right? Those, those amygdala rich experiences by observing the underlying and the unspoken all of the inherent become my motivations for modes of action. Through empathy, I avail in all things. Empathy. Try to understand their experience. Where is the return? Where is the return on investment in that energetic investment? How do you get that back? Well, by analyzing to empathize, you usually need to go away and process. I've only met like two people that can really like be there actively conversing with you and processing. That is a passive state. Go process. Axiom seven. I am balanced by investing my time and presence into myself and others in equal capacity. I enrich others to support the living collective. 
I invest into myself to discover how I may be of service to the living collective. By acting as an agent of symbiosis, I welcome enriching experiences within myself and from the other members of the living collective. So if I want you to have an enriching experience, probably not going to white mud on your name. Probably not going to tear you down. Probably going to look at myself before I look at any error or erroneous act in you. Because everyone here in this room at least once has pointed out the straw in their brother's eye when they have a rafter in theirs. Okay? So these are judgment-free zones. These are safe spaces, safe places. But we're not looking to trigger, demean, or minimize. We're looking to empathize, right? So sometimes things are going to come up because we get old monkey mind. We're leaving that homo sapien era, that homo sapien phase, and we're stepping into the homo luminous, being beings of light, light bodies, right? So what happens when you have a cultural collision and there's some damage? Conflict resolution is a thing. Even in heaven, the gods fought over resources. Zeus was kind of selfish. He just thought he could impregnate everybody. Right? Oh, I like that one and that one and that one and that one. Pan's just jumping around like, does it fit? Oh, yeah, this one too. Right? And somebody should have told Cupid, like, bro, mind your own damn business, bro. You, you can't just be, like, flying around throwing people into each other. Right? Like, it's not cool, bro. I mean, it is kind of cool because, like, love is love is love. But, like, damn, man. Right? That's that compassion that we talked about. That's the analysis there to say, okay, maybe this is my stuff and not their stuff. That's that self-awareness, right? That's how we get through. We don't look to add harm. We don't look to cause injury. We sympathize, right? Now, another really, really, really big or important part of this is going to be a support structure. Did, weren't we just looking at that? Okay, not a glitch, cool. Oh, hey, there's your support system. Right, remember all those amazing Power Rangers, those superheroes, those Avengers, those Guardians, those Eternals all around you? Greatness attracts greatness, like of the like. So when you're going through great adversity, go to your great allies. When you're feeling deep pain, Go to the people you feel safe with, right? Don't, don't let that cerebral hijack ruin something. Like, let's get back into the body. Let's feel what we're feeling and then make good use of it. And when somebody comes to you and says, hey, I'm hurting, hey, I'm having an issue, we act accordingly when invited. But sometimes that other love language is space. You need to back up and let me finish analyzing so I can empathize with the trash you just told me because you set me off. Right? I definitely did not appreciate that. So let me think about why I'm feeling what I'm feeling. And then I'm going to come back after I propose a way to make amends. I talk to my best friend, male and female. I got a good perspective. I think I know how this is going to affect me and the other person. Because I'm seeking peace in myself and seeking peace in them, I think I have some guidelines for operation. Thank you, support structure. Thank you for the alternative perspective. Thank you for holding space for me to cry, right? Thanks for that walk. Thanks for caring. Thanks for feeding me, right? Then this really weird thing happens. People start looking out for you. And you start looking out for them. Hmm. People start creating. 
you start creating. People start thriving. You start thriving. Because we're mutually evolving. We're being shown that it is okay to be transitionary and get from one state to the other to make human advancement, right? Because that's all it is in this experience, this journey. Itty weedy little baby steps. One after another, right? It doesn't come in a day, even if it's Rome, right? But it surely can fall apart. So that builds us to the way that we build bridges. Now that we're talking about this, this common two-lane road of give and take and exchange with others. So I want to I wanna take you to a term that is celestial specific, cognitive etymology, the way that we build bridges. Now the word etymology is typically like the history or the culture of something, not to be confused with ethos, it's not the characteristics, it is the experience and its nature, right? So as we build these roads, we're looking and taking account of the way that we express ourselves, right? Our self-representation, right? Who we align with and how we show up, how services are offered. Who do we live with? Who do we invite into our space? Who do we share energy with, right? External views. What is the community outward, not the developed community, okay? What is the outward community doing to engage with us as well and how can we improve that and then also our external allies where are we creating allies right we talked about the allies at the beginning of this support system so that we can be a group of decentralized autonomous organisms or, or organization i'm sorry or wait or organism organism it's all the same thing it's all the same thing doesn't matter if it's your body doesn't matter if it's your community, your home, your business, it's multiple organisms working together, right? The ecology of the human experience, alchemy, what elements are you involving? What elements are you playing with, benefiting from, handing out and receiving? Let's move on. So now as we've considered these elements, what it is to be self-sustained, empowered, right? We gotta think about what comes next. What do we want for the generation after us, right? So if we are infinite, luminous light bodies, having a human experience and dictating the stories that will be the novel, what are we writing for the next generation, right? We analyze to empathize. We have this, experience, this human experience. We learn, right? We come, we play, we go. So what tools are we leaving behind? Well, I encourage all of you as we move into the age of Aquarius to start looking at libraries. And not a place where you go and you get a little card and, and, and check out books. I'm saying, where can you create a store, a wealth of knowledge for more than yourself? Is it commercial? Is it physical? Is it emotional, spiritual, mental, procedural, participatory? Where can you create a library so this next generation of crystal children coming in don't inherit what we did? Because this global community, this global culture wouldn't be falling apart if it worked. I haven't found anything else in nature that just decides decay is a good thing. Breakdown is beautiful only. No, there's light and dark in it, right? So as you thought through these different people, right, in the beginning of this discussion and this co-creation, we thought about some different people in our lives that provide different superpowers to us and how we exchange and interact with them. Invite them to your library. Learn from them and pass on what you have learned to them. Because in mutual evolution, we keep 
going. None of you would be homo luminous now if you didn't keep going, right? None of you would be in your seats now if you didn't keep going with the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I wanted to turn it over to a little bit of a discussion now um, before we wrap things up totally and completely and, and talk about what kind of culture we're creating, how we can create a more efficient one, and maybe what your community needs. So if any of those are topics, we can treat this like a brainstorm. I am so-and-so, I need, I'm looking for, I'm wanting to experience, I'm looking to give, whatever that may be. Let's keep it to two minutes or less. I'm just gonna pass this around the room. We can all check in. Again, please let us know who you are, what you need, or what you can give, all right? Why am I such a magnet? <laughs> I am a master channel. I know who I am. I want you to feel important. I want you to feel known and sovereign and seen and felt. And that's what I have to give. I need you, and 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 you. Thank you. So I am a back off of her. I am a master healer in multiple different areas of what I've put together as my healing modality under Reiki. <laughs> but um, what I can give is just really insight and um, understanding about things that we tend to um, overlook by details that really tie together the puzzle. So what I am I'm the one that goes deep and dives deep the, the truth and try to put it all together in a way that helps um, lead and guide others into their own life. And what I need, uh, my needs are always met when I need them, which is why I'm here today. Um, only thing I would need other than that is for you guys to understand the same thing. For me, I feel like, I don't know, like the recent culture is like, I feel like for the, the majority, they lack like, it lacks critical, like, characteristics that, like, tie into everything that we cover. Like, I'm a carpenter. I, I, I build things. I make them better. And I'm lucky enough to love what I do. I sleep great at night. I work hard. And, like, those are the principles that drive me. And I feel like a lot... Because... This is all very new to me, and like the thing I keep coming back to is that it's a shame that we have to teach this to people. It's scary, it's frightening, you know? And like, I feel like, like culture became that way, it wasn't that way. Like the trade that I'm in, what I do, like, it instills like, integrity on 
dynasty. And like, that's from earlier in the century. You know, that's when those characteristics thrived, when it was commonplace. So rather than, well, along with creating, I feel like it would be more productive to preserve what was, you know? Because, you know, it's just like they say, like they just don't make them like they used to. And it, it shows. That's what I got. so much negativity that just comes along with everything, you know, and like to be able to come to a place where you can decompress and share what's on you and get it off you, you know, it takes away all the hurt, you know, and that's a beautiful thing that I'm incredibly thankful for. here to receive the manifestation that I prayed for for many years and I am a creator I am someone that can visualize and what God has done for me is to manifest my vision with him I'm here to die this week I am really blessed and honored to know that just speaking it seeing it believing it without a shadow of a doubt it will come to pass, and I am here to see it, and I'm grateful. And all I need right now is let's keep doing what we don't. I am a connector of people, communities, businesses. more people to connect with. I need more communities to co-collaborate with. And y'all just do an awesome job here. Good job, guys. That's it. I, too, am here for connection, um, as well as learning, uh, opening up to new, new things that uh, been out of my awareness and actually when it's out of your awareness it's out of your control but I also am here also to offer the gift that uh, the God in the universe has blessed me with uh, I'm a hypnotist a hypnotherapist a licensed NLP practitioner um, when I work with someone my intentions is to guide you in a manner that you can rid whatever beliefs or protection your brain has put up or even maybe take the lessons from some of the events and circumstances and situations that you've been through so that you can live a more joyful life, move forward in the things you want to move forward and be the true person you are truly here to be with. So um, if there's anything I can do for any of y'all, I would really enjoy sharing the techniques and stuff that I've learned. Um, I am, hmm, I, f I feel like I'm an ascension coach, right? I'm, I'm, I'm really here to help you to walk through the gate and it's whatever gate you're at. And I've been equipped with, I feel the blessing of being the messenger and I'm super honored, you know, just to be able to deliver the message with clarity and with compassion, you know, and with presence. So the only thing that I really need is just for us to be brave, to continue to just continue to be brave and continue to step forward regardless of how thick the mud 
comes. You know, just one step. That's it. That's all you need. One step. Every time it's just one step. So that's all I need. It's just for us to take one step. Um, so I'm here as a healer of the emotional body and the pain body. And it's my role to help people get into that without so much fear and trepidation and support people in ways to heal those traumas that's effective and not so scary. And um, I'm also here because of Cheryl. Cheryl is the bomb.com. And she has supported Kayvon and I just nonstop and to the point where I can't even understand it, <laughs> how supportive she is. But she just keeps on supporting us. And so she said the word and I jumped and here I am. And um, I'm also here to just be reinvigorated and inspired and um, for, the, for the fellowship. Um, so tired of being online all the time. I like organic human beings in my presence. <laughs> so seeing all of you has just been such a blessing. It's beautiful. And what do I need? I need... Not sure how much of it is discipline, how much of it is like support. Maybe I need some editors. But I need help <laughs> because Kayvon and I have a TV show that we want to make. And I've been working on this for like 20 years. And every time I look at the Hollywood scene, I just see a lot of funky stuff that I don't want to contract with. And all my writing teachers are like, oh, you're just saying that because you don't want to write. I'm like, well, no, it matters because if it means that I have to do a low budget stick figure puppet show to tell this story, then that's okay. But that's different writing than if I have a million dollar budget, you know? And I'm fine either way because a good story is a good story. I think South Park has shown us you don't, you don't need a big budget if you have a funny story, right? So I, I need help getting that together. And yeah, that's me. Um, hi, everyone. I guess I'm just another you. Everybody has said a descriptor that I embody as well and hope to see others embody. Um, I guess primarily I'm here. I hope to create space for everyone to step into the next version of themselves, activate the light body. And I guess in turn, for those that choose to break generational trauma and I see a lot of aspiring mothers that do not want to repeat the same timelines and understand how frightening that is for those that choose to bring forth another version of themselves. So I hope to clarify and bring an understanding for those families to break free and just live an abundant life and for every individual to feel empowered. Thank you. Um, what do I need? Um, I guess I need everybody to be as honest as they can with themselves because that's the only way forward. Hello, I am a professional psychic reader and multidimensional healer specializing in the removal of negative man manifestations, negative beings, negative energies. And we teach, uh, we have a number of programs that help people understand what your psychic abilities are, what you're doing, and what is your strange mission in this weird world. Um, I really, really love the authenticity of the people in this room. Seriously, it's like my heart is pounding over here, especially what you said, really. I mean, true, true authenticity. And so um, I'm just honored to be here and to just, you know, talk about all the weird stuff that we do, and uh, especially when it comes to extraterrestrial contact, which we're all going to get to have here tomorrow. But that said, what do I need? I need the type of authenticity in my life that I see in this room. It's an honor to be here, and thank you. Well, I guess it's me. I, 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 I'm just thankful. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you go. Yeah, right. I'm here in the corner. Um, so I'm a natural health practitioner, and um, you know, I'm here basically to share about the model of care that I've been using for the past 15 years to help people heal. Um, 
mostly physical, and that's a functional model called functional medicine. How creative. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've experienced tremendous healing physically, mentally, emotionally, and physically with all kinds of different modalities. And, um, you know, I'm here to help people do that. I'm here to, um, I guess what I need to do is just keep doing what's in front of me and leave the results up to God. Um, and not get into my head too much because I'm a mental projector. Yeah. Ow. Oh, um, administrative people, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I need to, I need space, I need peace, I need, um, just room to have clarity and um, openness. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I appreciate everyone in this room. Like, uh, it's funny how everyone in here is a healer, and they, uh, they 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 know what they want. I mean, they know what they're giving, but it's always what they need is like the second to last. We always don't know what we need because we always giving. Um, me personally, like I, I'm a coach. I'm a motivator. Like I inspire people. Like I give confidence to those who don't see the confidence within them. I have a dark light that can shine a light on your darkness. Like it's amazing. So. Um, that's what I bring, and I have a multitude of other gifts that come and flow. But um, I just continue to need just that support and just to continue to be seen and to be around people where I could just express myself authentically and freely and just more confidently and to be uh, understood and overstood and understood. So that's that. Hey, hey. Well, let's see, what am I, who am I? I know I am a, I ask to be the mother to every soul, both dark and light, to be able to help them, all souls, to have a peace place, to give them a resting place within my body that they can find comfort. So I, I need a lot of you guys to understand the sadness that's in the dark, the sadness that's in the light, um, and just understand the purpose or try to just get a, a understanding of each purpose, to not judge it, to not bring them harm, and understand that sometimes the roles that they have to embrace are difficult. Um, it's hard and, and it's judgy. They judge themselves more than others. So I just need everyone to look within and see it in you. It's in you, all of it. And I'm here. I'm gonna give y'all a place to rest, no matter what you do, how you do it. I'm here for you. So I just need y'all to be. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Respecting consent yes. is non-consensual. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm in witness. Thank you. To my asking, I'm in witness. I see the tangible example of my heart's desire and this experience that's happening right here. So I need more of this. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, no. Perfect. So with that being said, identifying these facets, these fractals, these elements, right? Through the elements, we find the conscious self. And in the conscious self, we find the beauty of why we're here after we raise to the surface, right? And after that blossoming process, 
we return to anahata because in the end, all things are love. So you could call me a 3-6 spleener projector with a sacral authority, right? You could call me a triple Libra, Piscean ascendant, right? You could call me a, a, a red and yellow energy worker if you would like to. By all means, we could go by all kinds of different names, or I could go by Shun Williams or otherwise, right? But at the end of the day, I am love and I am you. So I wanna say I love each and every single one of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for investing in your gifts and for believing in other people. Thank you for supporting community and thank you for helping humanity take the next step forward in human advancement. I wanna say thank you to Josh for pulling together the physical world, our structural, physical, procedural people. I want to say thank you to Tia for our ideation, technological, and uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. I want to say thank you to Cheryl for being the initiator and the inspiration, right? The participant of birthing this and making all of this happen, right? I want to thank Joey for his devotion and his emotional output given to see all of this through. Right? I want to thank each and every single one of the other presenters that have been a part of this summit for offering your gifts, empowering the collective, and showing us the direction forward. Thank you, 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 all of you. This is what it is to stand in unison. This is what it is to stand in heaven, okay? This is what it is to embody divine beauty. Thank you.